Hello, Roger PC Jack. On Friday, 2nd of December, the spiritual success of the Dead Space, the Callisto Protocol, finally launched. This was one of my most highly anticipated titles of 2022, with its survival horror gameplay, really dark atmosphere, and overall, really next gen graphics. There was a lot to be excited about. But the bad news is, the reception seems to be pretty mixed. Even more so on the PC, which has been plagued with shader compilation issues, creating what has been the worst stutters I've seen on a PC release in quite some time. These stutters are pretty bad, especially when they happen right before a jump scare which completely takes you out of the game. Now, I have to say, a patch has been released which somewhat fixes some of the issues, but it's not 100% fixed right now. Not only that, but ray tracing seems to be even more of a resource hog, and even on my RTX 30A system, with RT enabled, I was in the low 30s at 1440p, so for most of the time I've been playing, I've just disabled it. Don't get me wrong, even with RT disabled, the game still looks amazing, but given that the 3080 isn't exactly a slouch, I shouldn't have to be disabling it for a game like this. To be fair, I have to say I am still enjoying it on my 13700KF and RTX 3080 system, and my performance with RT disabled and ultrasounds across the board seems to average around the 100fps mark, but again with the occasional dips. But what if we did something silly like run the game without a graphics card? It may be somewhat of a difficult task, but I do want to give it a go and see exactly what would happen. So for today, we'll be testing with two particular systems. First will be my Ryzen 5 5600G test system with its integrated Vega 7 graphics. I reviewed this CPU last year and with its integrated graphics, it did actually perform fairly well even at 1080p. So I'd be curious to see how well it fares against the Callisto protocol. Finally, the second system we're going to run in this game on is going to be the Steam Deck. Now, I'm not very optimistic for this, but I still thought it'd be useful to take a look to see just how well it performs on something a bit more lower end, compared to a full-fledged gaming desktop. Either way, I'll include a list of all the hardware used in today's video, including my Amazon affiliate links in the video description in case you're curious. But for now, let's get into some testing. So I'm not 100% sure if the shade comp has actually completed, but it seems to be uh, not dropping as much in the main menu at the moment, so it could be the case that it is finished now. But what I thought I would do first is run through the settings I'm going to be using on the 5600G. So as we can see in here, we're currently running with DX12 and we're running at 1920 by 1080 For our lighting settings, I'm running everything at medium, which may be a little too optimistic at this point, but we'll see how it goes. And for our effects, we've just disabled stuff like depth of field, motion blur, left subsurface scattering enabled. We've changed from TAA to FXA, which may help us a little bit, but we'll try both to see how it goes. For some reason, I can't find FSR, which I did have on my main system, but it's absent on here. So I'm not quite sure why that's not available. But I think what we'll do to begin before we get into any actual gaming is we'll actually run the benchmark and see what the initial performance is looking like. And if we need to tweak things before we actually get into the game, then we'll do so after that. So uh, fingers crossed. It'll give us a chance to see what the stutter is like in this game at the moment. Okay. Whew. That's, uh... That's not a good start. Currently... <laughs> around 10 to 20 FPS. Let's go through the actual benchmark in full and then we'll have a think about what we can do to actually uh, improve things a little bit more. Okay, so we made it through the benchmark and we got an average frame rate of 26.65 FPS. Not good. Um, and it does recommend enabling the low graphics preset, which on a 5600G might be our best bet. So I'm just gonna do that. I'll keep everything else the same and hopefully that does the trick. Okay, so we're back in the graphics settings and I've literally just dropped everything down to low including disabling subsurface scattering just to see if that helps a little bit perhaps um, everything else yeah just low as low as it can go at 920 by 1080 so we'll uh, jump back into the benchmark and see how it looks okay is it gonna stay there Ooh, it's still dipping very very heavily not a great start okay so uh, we're actually in the game now and as you see, we're in the about low 30s, which admittedly is playable by certain people's standards, but as you can see, the game looks absolutely awful at low settings. Uh, let's actually push forward and see how it runs when we actually get into a bit of action. So we got a couple of these zombie things. Let's see what happens if we try and attack these. Oh. So every time I'm shooting my gun, there's... Oh, there was a bit of stuff before, but now it's not as bad. But 
it's very jarring the amount of stutter that is coming up when actually like playing the game. But honestly, I'm not gonna. I wouldn't say this is an enjoyable experience, all things considered. I think what we're gonna have to do is drop it down to 720p and see how it looks with that. And maybe we could bump up the graphics settings a little bit more. So uh, I'll take a little look and I'll get back to you. Okay, we're not quite done with the 5600G quite yet, because I'm an absolute idiot and did not realize that if you disable TAA, you can't actually use FSR. So, I went back in, and I enabled it, and what do you know, we have FSR 2.0 available now. So we're going to start again, and we're going to go for performance, medium settings across the board, back at 1920 by 1080 and see how that works. So hopefully... Using FSR should solve a lot of our problems with this game. Okay, so even at 1920 by 1080, FSR doesn't quite help that much. But I think we could feasibly get away with running medium settings at 720p with FSR performance. And hopefully that'll do the trick. Okay, so I think this is about the best I've managed to get it to look. And we're running basically with a mix of low and medium settings. Quality still looks a bit better, but with FSR performance... It is looking a little blurry. Admittedly, I'm running this on a slightly larger monitor. So if you had a 1080p display or something along those lines, you might be okay. But again, yeah, we're looking at around mid-30s, occasionally going into the low 40s. We went to the 50s as well. But I do have to say, this looks a lot more playable than what it was previously. Let's just kill this uh, worm thing right here. So, to be fair, I think this does look a lot better than what we had it at previously. So, maybe you could get away with this, but again, it is going to depend on your uh, sort of tolerance for a loss in visual quality. So, if you're on a 5600G and you want to be able to play this game, I would probably recommend, like I said, running DX11, running it at 1280 by 720 and running for low on all our lighting settings, and then using Temporal AA, or you could use Motion Blur to help smooth out some of those low FPS numbers, but... It'll depend if you like motion blue or not. And then lastly, go for AMD FSR 2.0 performance. And then you can use medium for the textures. Or even drop those if you wanted to push the uh, performance up even higher. But there will be a very noticeable degradation to visuals. Now that the 5600G has kind of got a semi-pass in that regard. Let's move on to the Steam Deck to close things out. Okay, so we're now running Callisto Protocol on Steam Deck. And to start, we're going to go with the exact same settings that we finished off with on our 5600G system. So as you can see, going again with FSR performance and our texture set to medium quality. And then for our lighting, we just got everything set to low, just as we did before. So we're going to go through the benchmark, see how it looks, and then we'll jump to the game and see how it runs. Ooh, dear. It's already uh, not looking very promising. We're currently in the sort of... Uh, low 20s or it jumped up a little it always jumps up a little bit in this part of the benchmark not a good sign to start with all things considered uh we could jump into the actual game to see if it's any better but i think we may have to just drop everything down to as low as possible and hope for the best let's just get to the end of the benchmark and we'll check out our score first uh, okay 35.28 fps didn't really feel like that but let's have a little tinker and see if we can get anything better Okay, I just dropped everything to low and it's made no difference in the benchmark run at all. So, I think what we're going to have to do is just jump into the game and see how it looks. Okay, I've been waiting for ages now and the game won't actually load into a save. So, I'm going to have to try and think of a fix and hopefully we can get into the actual game. Okay, I finally managed to get into one of my saves. And, uh, first impressions are... Jeez, not looking particularly great at the moment again we're losing a lot of quality i would say with the settings we're currently using and i don't even think we're on low settings yet um and again we are getting some pretty significant dips but then it goes right back up i think what i'll try and do is actually limit us to 30 just to see if that makes anything a bit more smooth and uh, we'll see how it goes yeah it's dipping real hard so i'm to begin some combat Oh, it just dips horrifically. Yeah, this is not fun at all. It's just stutter after stutter. I honestly can't recommend this on Steam Deck. Maybe there'll be some updates, but I don't know. This is just not 
a very fun experience. I'm probably gonna die really soon. Oh, <laughs> that was a bit of a, a delayed response, but yeah, I can't do this anymore. This is this is hurting my eyes. So to close out the video, getting this game to run on lower end hardware is certainly a difficult task. To be fair to the 5600G, we did get to a much more playable level of quality, and especially when you think about the fact that I was running this on a 1440p monitor. If it was on a smaller display like a 1081, then you would have a bit more of a better experience compared to what I had, because after watching the video captures back, it did look a bit better than what I thought at first. For the Steam Deck though, I really cannot recommend it right now. It took a lot of work to get running, and even now I don't think it was really worth it in the end. So unless any updates change that, I would steer well clear of this game if you're only going to play it on the go. Again, this game does need a lot of work, but for any of you guys running a CPU similar to the 5600G or even the 5700G, hopefully today's video has given you a bit more of a reasonable impression of what the game will actually run like in your system and the sort of quality you can expect. So, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos on the way soon. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at PCJack94. If you'd like to talk more myself and other like-minded hardware enthusiasts, then make sure to check out the PCJack Discord server. You'll find links to all those in the video description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.